In archaeology, a denticulate tool is a stone tool containing one or more edges that are worked into multiple knot shapes or teeth, much like that of a toothed edge of a saw. Such tools have been used as saws for woodworking, processing meat and hides, craft activities, and agricultural purposes. Denticulate tools were used by many different groups worldwide and have been found at a number of notable archaeological sites. They can be made from a number of different lithic materials, but a large number of denticulate tools are made from flint or chert. Experiments carried out by archaeologists found that using denticulate tools seemed to provide more control when working wood than a raw flake or even a scraper might, because they hold the position well on the wood because of the notches. Shaped wooden artifacts have been found and uncovered at sites alongside denticulate tools, suggesting the tools were used to shape these items. Where analysis carried out on denticulate tools at sites in Spain and Italy suggests that they were employed in hideworking and butchery activities. The sort of polish on the notches on a denticulate tool can also indicate it was used to scrape hides or skin. Evidence shows that denticulate tools were used by Paleolithic craftsmen. Some denticulate tools found in Spain have characteristics which suggest they were used for craft activities. In particular, crafts that required careful and precise action or work on small items such as needles or handles. Denticulate tools have a wide distribution and have been found in many places around the world including Europe, Asia, and Africa. Denticulate tools are usually made from flint, but can also be made from other materials such as limestone or quartz. The availability and quality of the raw materials used to create denticulate tools is heavily influenced by geographic area. An analysis of raw materials and where they come from can provide information about the travel and trading habits of the inhabitants of ancient sites. There is a bit of a typology dilemma when it comes to denticulates. It can be difficult for archaeologists to sort and classify these tools because it's impossible for them to know if the notches were created intentionally or as a result of unintentional damage. Incorrectly classifying items found at an archaeological site is problematic because it can have a significant impact on how the tools and the site are interpreted by archaeologists. It is very common at times to find flakes with some sort of microflaking done to them, but that can happen from the environment, them being exposed to the elements, rock falls, any number of instances could create little microflakes. Look for uniformity, look for design teeth, more importantly, and if possible, have an edgeware analysis done to it. But not every stone flake is a denticulate. It just might be a stone flake. Crafting a denticulate tool isn't very difficult. A good piece of chert and you can get the end result you want. Whenever I craft any sort of stone tool, whether it's a drill, a burin, or even a denticulate, I like to create three blanks. It gives me three options to work if one was to fail. You really don't need a lot of tools to create a denticulate. A couple hammer stones, a soft billet, and a couple pressure flakers will get the job done.
each one's got a little different property. This one's got a slight bend to it. This one's got a thicker top, little holding piece, and this one's a little bit elongated. All possible blanks to build a denticulate. Let's use this one right here. Most of the teeth and notches that I put in a denticulate come from a notching tool that I use for most projectile points. I craft the denticulates really to fit in my hand. Whether I'm going to be processing any wood, cutting meat, scraping hides, it's really designed for my hand. The teeth are really the key in a denticulate. You can make them as deep or as shallow as you want. They will break over time and with use, but it's very easy to throw some more notches in there and get the tool back into action. Denticulate tools are tools. They're not designed to look super extravagant or overdone. I also like to have some longevity to them. I don't want them to be able to get one or two uses. I want to be able to throw many notches in there, create many teeth, and have a lifespan with it. If you are scraping a hide with a denticulate, avoid super sharp edges. Avoid sharp pointed teeth and create a more of a flatter edge with flatter teeth. A good piece of chert or flint that fits well in the hand and you have a denticulate. You don't have to overthink it. Remember, this is a tool. It's designed to be used. It's not an arrow point or a spearhead you're going to hang on your wall. It's something you can craft in the bush, whether you're going down that primitive skills world or you need some sort of survival tool to cut open some meat. Good denticulate will definitely, definitely help in wood processing, hide tanning. I mean, it's a scraper, it's a saw, it's a butchering tool. It's kind of really a, a multi-tool. It's definitely something uh, any first time flint knopper should be able to make as well as anyone that's really going down that path of lithic technologies and living like the ancient past. One denticulate. Thanks for watching.